Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new generation of Interreg Central Europe Program 2127. My name is Mirjana Dominovic. I work at Joint Secretariat at Interreg Central Europe Program in Vienna. And today I will present you the simplified cost options. Before I will go into deeper analysis of simplified cost options, I would like to start from the reimbursement options on which basis we can reimburse the cost. And it's a real cost, cost paid and accounted for on a real cost basis. And then we have simplified cost options where we have the possibility of flat rates, fixed percentages or fixed lump sums. So there is a possibility of combining real cost and simplified cost options, but not all combinations are possible. And these combinations we will see later in the presentation. I will go more in details in simplified cost options now. Um, as indicated before, there is a lump sum for the preparation and contracting. It is 17,500 of total cost and which is 14,000 of ERDF. What is important um, for the beneficiaries is that the amount has to be included in the application form in the section E. Practically preparation sum of 17,500 can be divided between the partners, uh, but in total the amount cannot be higher or lower than this 17,500. It is a lump sum. Only approved projects that will have this amount indicated in the application form will get this amount paid after the approval. So don't forget to indicate it in the section E. There will be no audit trail necessary for this payment or any kind of the report. It is a lump sum. Now coming to the flat rates. First, uh, a flat rate for staff cost, cost category one, which is 20% 20, uh, 20 of direct cost other than direct staff cost, so here we are talking 20% of external expertise and services, equipment and infrastructure and works. It is not mandatory. It is up to the partner to decide will they use this option. Second, office and administrative cost, cost category two. It is 15% of staff cost, eligible staff cost, and it is mandatory. The next option is travel and accommodation cost. We have a flat rate percentage of eligible staff cost and the percentage is depending on the country. This is mandatory. So each partner will have to check what is their percentage and include it in the application form. And, uh, and at the end, we have a direct cost other than staff cost. Those are uh, for cost categories from two till six, where we have 40% of eligible direct staff cost. This is not mandatory and it needs to be decided on the partner level when drafting the application form. Here it is important uh, to indicate once more that those 40% include all cost categories from two till six. Now we will go to the combination at the partner level, how the budget for partners can look like. Now from the screen, you see that there are three options that the partner can choose within the project. However, those options do not influence preparation costs and they don't influence the closure cost. What the partner needs to decide on project implementation. And we will go now into detail in the options. So partner budget option one, where the staff costs are calculated on a real cost basis, 
either staff working 100% on the project or with a fixed percentage. Uh, and these are real costs. And then you have uh, administration cost, cost category uh, two, 15% of eligible staff cost. And then you have travel and accommodation cost that is specific uh, percentage depending on uh, country where the partner is coming from. And the cost category four, five and six that are based on a real cost basis. Then the partner can choose an option two where the staff cost, cost category one, is actually flat rate of 20% of other direct cost. In this case, other direct costs are cost category four, five, and six. And in addition to that, it comes for the uh, administration cost, cost category two, flat rate 15% of eligible staff costs, and then travel and accommodation where it's again specific percentage for each partner depending on the country they are coming from. Then we have an option three where project partner is choosing to account staff cost on a real cost basis. Um, however, here it is obvious that uh, if they choose this option, they have to apply flat rate 40% on a of staff costs for all other cost categories. So cost category two, three, four, five, and six, they are all covered with this 40% of eligible staff cost. So what is important here is to say that options have to be chosen by the project partners in the application form and remain throughout the project lifetime. They cannot be changed after the project is once approved. And in eligible expenditure in one cost category has an impact on the flat rates that have the same cost category as a basis for the calculation. So what it means? It means in this case, if uh, there is an eligible cost in real cost uh, calculation of staff cost, then it has repercussion on 50% of administration and also on travel and accommodation in option two. If there is an eligible amount under um, cost category four, five, or six, then there is a repercussion for all other three categories. And in the last option, option three, if there is again ineligible amount under um, staff cost calculation, uh, cost category one, then of course it has repercussion on this total amount uh, here. What is also important here maybe to say or, um, or to put it clearly out is that you cannot combine, for example, option two with option three, where you take staff cost flat rate 20% and all other costs flat rate quarter percent. Since this option here says that uh, this 40% has to be based on a, a calculation of a staff cost on a real cost basis, not on a percentage. So for example, this combination is not possible. Now focusing on the staff cost, we have definition set in the program manual. It says that it consists of gross employment cost of staff employed by the beneficiary for the implementing the project. Staff can either be already employed by the beneficiary or uh, contracted specifically for the project, for example, after the approval of the project. And staff may be employed vis-a-vis -vis the 
project either on a full-time basis or on a part-time basis. And this I will explain later on in my following slide. What we say here, it's an extra note that uh, payments to natural persons working for the beneficiary under contract other than employment contract may be regarded as salary payments. And so they would be seen as a staff cost. If this is the case, then certain requirements and conditions that are given in our program manual have to be met in order to see this person as a staff cost. Um, in this case, we advise beneficiaries to pre-check with their national controllers is this really a staff cost or maybe uh, it can be also external expertise cost category four. Now we will continue with the definition of staff cost um, as indicated before. And um, what we can say that staff costs can be calculated on a real cost basis. That employee can be then on a full time on the project or part time on the project. So if it is full time on the project, it can be 100% reimbursed. Here it is important to say that um, a person can work only 20 hours for the employer. However, all those 20 hours working for the project. So it means it would be full time on the project. And the second case is part time of the, on the project where, for example, person is working uh, 40 hours for the employer full time. However, only 20 hours for the project. So it means 50% on the project. In this case, this needs to be calculated as a fixed percentage of working time of an employee on the project per month. It needs, this percentage needs to be stipulated in working contract, task, task assignment document, and percentage cannot change per month. Actually, percentage should remain the same throughout the project if possible. Um, however, if uh, there is a change, let's say uh, somebody worked 20 hours on the project and um, the other person left the project and this first person now needs to increase their percentage to 40, 50 or 60 uh, percent, then uh, this needs to be changed. Also vice versa if the situation happens. Um, however, it is important to say that this should not be changed every month, but this can be done per reporting period. And uh, of course, um, in some months, people will work less or more. However, that, that percentage is in some realistic range. And then we have 20% flat rate um, that we mentioned earlier. It is based on 20% direct cost, uh, cost categories four, five, and six. Here, um, what is important to say that no documentation is needed. Um, and they need to demonstrate, PARTA needs to demonstrate that at least one employee is involved in the project. This is very often done with uh, self-declaration to show that one person is working on the project. And this showed to be the best option for one-man companies or the huge institutions where audit trail cannot be insured or whether, where it is very hard to ensure proper audit trail. In the program manual, you will find the examples of those calculations for real cost and flat rate and further detailed explanations on those options. 
Thank you for listening and showing the interest in the Interact Center program. Here you can see further contacts and details where you can find more information on our program. Thank you for listening and goodbye.